The DNA results of that test showed that not only was it not Elvis Presley's. On August 16th, 1977, Elvis Presley was found dead at Graceland. He was 42 years old. For decades, the story was simple. Drugs, obesity, and a reckless lifestyle killed the king of rock and roll. But a shocking discovery through DNA analysis has revealed something that changes everything. Hidden in Elvis Presley's genes was an illness that may have destined him to die early. The DNA solved a mystery nearly 50 years old, and what it revealed would rewrite everything we thought we knew about his death. A hair sample unlocks the past. In 2014, a British documentary series called Dead Famous DNA set out to investigate celebrity deaths through an entirely new lens, genetic analysis. The goal was ambitious, use modern DNA technology to uncover medical truths that autopsy reports from decades past could never reveal. For their investigation into Elvis Presley, they obtained a hair sample purchased from a friend of his longtime barber. It was a small, seemingly insignificant artifact a few strands of hair preserved for years. But those strands contained something invaluable, Elvis's genetic blueprint. The sample was sent to Dr. Stephen Kingsmore, a renowned geneticist at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri. This was not a search for drug traces or toxins. The researchers were looking for something far more fundamental. They were searching for genetic mutations, the kind written into DNA from the moment of conception. What Dr. Kingsmore and his team discovered was stunning. Elvis Presley carried gene variants linked to serious cardiovascular disease. Specifically, the DNA analysis identified mutations associated with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is a condition where the heart muscle thickens abnormally, making it difficult for the heart to pump blood effectively. This was not just a lifestyle problem. This was not the result of too many cheeseburgers or too many pills. This was coded into his DNA from birth, a genetic defect that had been silently threatening his life for decades. But the heart condition was only the beginning of what the DNA revealed. If Elvis's genes predetermined his heart to fail, what else was hiding in his genetic blueprint? And more importantly, could he have ever escaped his fate? Elvis's Declining Health by the early 1970s, the decline of Elvis Presley was becoming impossible to ignore. The man who once commanded stages with effortless charisma was visibly struggling. His weight had ballooned. His performances became erratic, sometimes brilliant, sometimes barely coherent. Concerts were canceled. Fans worried. Something was clearly deeply wrong. Between 1972 and 1977, Elvis was hospitalized four separate times. Doctors treated him for a range of alarming conditions, hypertension, which is chronic high blood pressure, an enlarged colon, difficulty breathing, and recurring chest pain. His diet had become the stuff of legend, and not in a good way. Fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches, bacon by the pound, heavy, greasy southern comfort food consumed in massive quantities. He was also taking a staggering number of prescription medications, painkillers, sedatives, stimulants, by the time of his death, toxicology reports revealed 10 different drugs in his system. To the outside world, it seemed obvious. Elvis was eating himself to death. He was abusing drugs. He was living recklessly, and his body was paying the price. Then came August 16th, 1977. Elvis Presley was found unconscious on the bathroom floor of his Graceland mansion. Attempts to revive him failed. He was pronounced dead at Baptist Memorial Hospital in Memphis at just 42 years old. The official autopsy report listed the cause of death as cardiac arrhythmia, an irregular heartbeat that caused his heart to stop. Contributing factors included hypertensive heart disease and coronary artery disease. The toxicology report made headlines with 10 prescription drugs found in his system. The narrative seemed to write itself. Elvis died because of his lifestyle, but then, in October 1977, the medical examiner issued a clarification. A drug overdose was officially ruled out as the direct cause of death. Yes, there were drugs in his system, but they were not what killed him. His heart had simply given out. Still, questions remained. 
Elvis's heart was severely enlarged, a condition that typically develops over many years of strain. But why? He was only 42. How did someone so young, someone with access to the best medical care money could buy, have such advanced heart disease? Some doctors speculated about genetic factors, but without concrete evidence, it remained just that, speculation. The mystery of Elvis Presley's death lingered unanswered for decades until that single hair sample changed everything. What DNA reveals about disease. Not all diseases are caused by the choices we make. Some are written into our genetic code long before we take our first breath. Our DNA, the biological instruction manual that makes us who we are, can carry mutations that predispose us to illness. Heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer. Sometimes fate is decided at conception. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, often abbreviated as HCM, is one of those genetically inherited conditions. It affects approximately one in 500 people, making it far more common than most realize. In HCM, the walls of the heart muscle thicken abnormally. This thickening makes it harder for the heart to pump blood efficiently. Over time, the heart has to work harder and harder. That extra strain can lead to dangerous complications, irregular heartbeats, known as arrhythmias, heart failure, and in the worst cases, sudden cardiac death. The terrifying thing about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is how silent it can be. Many people who have it experience no symptoms at all, at least not initially. Others might feel chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, or fatigue. But these symptoms are easy to dismiss or attribute to other causes, especially in someone living a high-stress, physically demanding lifestyle. For someone like Elvis Presley, who performed under intense pressure, traveled constantly, and dealt with chronic pain, it would have been almost impossible to recognize HCM without genetic testing. And in the 1970s, that kind of testing simply did not exist. The DNA analysis of Elvis's hair did not stop at the heart mutation. It revealed multiple genetic vulnerabilities. Researchers identified gene variants associated with obesity. For years, people mocked Elvis for his weight gain, blaming his love of rich fried foods. But what if his body was genetically wired to struggle with weight regulation? What if the battle was not just about willpower? The analysis also found genes linked to migraines. Elvis suffered from chronic, debilitating headaches throughout his life. He was frequently in pain, which contributed to his reliance on prescription medications. Again, this was not just bad luck. It was genetic. There were even genes associated with glaucoma, a condition that affects vision. Elvis had documented struggles with his eyesight in his later years. All of these findings painted a picture of a man whose body was genetically predisposed to struggle. A man fighting battles on multiple fronts that he could not see and could not control. And then there was his family history. Genetics often run in families, passed down from parent to child like a whispered secret encoded in DNA. Elvis's mother, Gladys Presley, died tragically young at the age of 46. Her cause of death was heart failure. The parallels are haunting. If Gladys carried similar genetic mutations, she may have passed them directly to her son. The DNA evidence was mounting, piece by piece, building toward an unavoidable conclusion. But there was one finding that would change the entire narrative of his death. Destined to die early. Dr. Stephen Kingsmore's conclusion, based on the DNA analysis, was as definitive as it was devastating. Elvis Presley's genes destined him to die early. The mutation linked to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy was not just a risk factor. It was not something that might cause problems down the road. It was a genetic time bomb, ticking quietly inside his chest from the day he was born. The lifestyle factors that dominated the narrative for so long the drugs, the diet, and the relentless touring schedule did not cause his death. They accelerated what was already inevitable. Mark Evans, the presenter of the dead famous DNA documentary, put it bluntly, this might have been his genetic destiny. Dr. Kingsmore went even further, 
He argued that for decades, society had unfairly blamed Elvis for his own demise. Elvis had a medical illness, Kingsmore explained. All of the stuff about how he killed himself with his lifestyle might have been very unfair. Think about that for a moment. For nearly 50 years, Elvis Presley was held up as a cautionary tale. A superstar who had it all and threw it away. A man who could not control his appetites, who indulged too much, who destroyed himself. But the DNA tells a different story. It tells the story of a man whose body was betraying him, a man fighting a battle he did not even know he was in. The shocking discovery is this. Elvis Presley did not die because he was reckless. He died because he was born with a genetic defect that in 1977, no one was looking for and no one could have detected. If he had been born just 30 years later, genetic screening might have identified the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy mutation early. Doctors could have monitored his heart more closely. Medications could have been prescribed to manage the condition. Lifestyle modifications could have been implemented. In extreme cases, surgical interventions might have been an option. But in the 1970s, none of that was possible. Elvis Presley died not because of who he was, but because of his genetics and when he was born. His fate was sealed by biology, by a roll of the genetic dice that he lost before he ever sang his first song. Rewriting the Elvis Narrative For decades, the public narrative around Elvis Presley's death was clear and unforgiving. He was a man who had everything, talent, fame, wealth, adoration from millions, and he squandered it. He ate too much. He took too many pills. He let himself go. Tabloids feasted on his decline. Headlines screamed about his weight, his strange behavior, and his dependency on prescription drugs. Even in death, Elvis was not spared. He became a symbol of excess, a tragic figure whose downfall was entirely self-inflicted. But the DNA findings challenged that story at its very foundation. This was not just about bad choices. This was about biology, genetics, fate. The hypertrophic cardiomyopathy mutation Elvis carried was not something he chose. It was something he inherited, likely from his mother, whose own heart gave out far too early. The obesity he struggled with was not just the result of poor eating habits. His DNA revealed genetic variants that made weight regulation significantly harder. The migraines that plagued him, the vision problems, even the chronic pain that led to his reliance on medications, all of these had genetic components. Elvis Presley was not lazy. He was not weak. He was fighting a war on multiple fronts, and he was doing it without even knowing the enemy. What does this mean for how we remember him? It means we owe him a reassessment. It means the cruelty of the tabloids, the jokes about his weight, the assumptions about his character, all of it was built on an incomplete understanding of what was really happening inside his body. But the implications of this DNA discovery go far beyond one man's legacy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is still underdiagnosed today. Many people walk around with the same mutation Elvis had, completely unaware. It is estimated that hundreds of thousands of people in the United States alone carry genes for HCM, and most have no idea. For some, the first symptom is sudden cardiac death. There is no warning, no second chance. But modern genetic testing can change that. If you have a family history of heart disease, especially unexplained sudden death at a young age, genetic screening can identify mutations like the one Elvis carried. Once identified, doctors can monitor the condition, prescribe medications to reduce strain on the heart, and in some cases, recommend procedures to prevent sudden death. If Elvis had been born in the 2000s instead of 1935, his story might have ended very differently. He might have lived to see his grandchildren grow up. He might have continued making music well into old age. Instead, his genetic destiny cut his life short at 42, just as it had cut his mother's life short at 46. The human element of this story cannot be ignored. Elvis experienced symptoms that we now know were related to his heart condition, chest pain, shortness of breath, extreme fatigue. But in the 1970s, these were dismissed as consequences of his weight, his lifestyle, his stress. He was treated for the symptoms, but never for the underlying cause. 
The real tragedy is that Elvis may have been desperately trying to manage his health, trying to survive, but the medical understanding of the time was simply not equipped to help him. He was failed not by lack of effort, but by lack of knowledge. And that, perhaps, is the saddest part of all. This DNA discovery does not just change how we view Elvis's death. It changes everything about how we understand the intersection of genetics, lifestyle, and fate. Today, genetic testing offers hope where Elvis had none. The King may have left the building in 1977, but his DNA finally told us the truth about why he could never stay. Which celebrity's death should we deconstruct next? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next video.